All right. So uh, basically what I said uh, yesterday evening that, um, you know, that many turnovers, uh, that's a that's a problem. Um, I, I take responsibility for it because of, uh, you know, all three phases. We, you know, we struggled there at times, um, didn't take advantage of opportunities, which we normally do. They took advantage of opportunities on our side with 17 uh, points off of uh, the turnovers and um you just can't you, you're not gonna be able to function at a very high level in the national football league and and win games uh playing like that so um it's my responsibility to get the team ready and obviously uh you know we 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 weren't ready to play right there i mean that was they did a better job than what we did so with that time's yours go first to pete sweeney good pete Hey, Coach. Uh, in, in your look right. back at the the All-22, um, was the offensive issue just as simple as the turnovers, or or could there be a greater issue with with separation for some of your pass catchers? I know the trade deadline is coming up. I guess, you know, do you feel like you guys have enough in, in, in-house in in that regard? Well, I listen, I I do. Um, the uh, It was a combination of things. You know, it was one of those where we were kind of chasing, whether it was uh starting with me with a, a play call whether it was the play that was called was okay but we had a br- breakdown in protection whether the protection was good and the play was good we you know receiver dropped the ball or we didn't make the right read you know from from our quarterback side and uh you know and or we were running a wrong route so it, it was one of everything uh so when i mentioned that last night about there were things that I hadn't seen before uh, from this from this group who I have a lot of trust in. Um, I I saw things that I hadn't seen before. So somewhere I, I didn't get that point across to, to the guys and, um, you know, and, and my coaches. So it, we've got to we got to make sure we do a better job there. Let's go next to Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. Brad, I'll, I'll have a follow up if I could too, please. Uh, Coach, I, I know, listen, you just stated that a lot of things obviously didn't go the way you wanted them to go. So I'm, when I ask this question, I'm not bringing it up as just, you know, this one play or anything deciding the game, but MVS, when Pat on the fourth down threw it up to MVS, looked like that, you know, he was, he was being held. And, and we see it all the time in like the Hail Mary situation where receivers will just be kind of mauled. When you're in the competition committee conversations, is there is there talk about that, that like, Hey, that's just how they're going to call it. They're not going to make a call on that. And we all got to live with it. Or is that, you know, being the offensive guy in the room, is that something that, uh, you know, you, you bring up and has been discussed in the past? Yeah. Listen, I mean, we go through all that stuff. Um, you know, I, I, I would tell you, you look at sky Moore. sky Moore is going to take heat for dropping, uh, the ball. Well, when you look at it on tape, uh, you see that, his inside arm was dragged down, you know, so away from the ball. So uh, listen, the officials are, are human. Um, they do a good job. Um, uh, it's just, you know, sometimes it's hard to see everything, you know, that's a tough, tough deal by angles and all that. But uh, I would tell you the majority of the time they, they do a good job with all that. All right. And then uh, just procedurally, uh, I know the punters have gotten better and better in the league. And so where you catch it has gotten further and further, you know, gotten closer and closer to the to the goal line. Would you, you know, do you, are you OK with McColl catching, trying to make that catch at the five? Or is that starting to get to uh, an area where you'd rather see him just turn and let it go? Yeah, listen, I think he mentioned it last last night that, you know, he, he probably got a little greedy on that one. And uh, you're inside the 10 you you just let that let that go let's go next to jesse newell go ahead jesse hey andy um end of the first half you guys had a first and 10 in the red zone and uh that was the Mahomes strip sack play you seemed pretty frustrated after that one i just wondered if you could explain kind of looking at that play call what you guys were going for on that particular one yeah um well you know obviously a completion, more of a down there against that defense, and we're going to say the same thing this week. So it's the same same defense. Is you have bang bang calls, and and uh, you, you've got the 
you got to get the ball out fast. And if, if that's not there or available, then, you know, you're going to hang on to it and try to make a play. Um, but that, you know, that, that was the call was, was one for a bang banger. It just, um, didn't work out the way I wanted it. Let's go next to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Coach, this is kind of a historical, philosophical question, but seems appropriate with you playing the Dolphins. And and they're doing a lot of things with Tyreek, with Jet Motion that, that you did with him. Um, I know, you know, Bill Walsh going back, hey, pre-snap motion's been part of the West Coast offense from the beginning. I know he told a story about Bob Trumpy lining up on the wrong side one day and when he switched over, you know, seeing the confusion it causes. But for you, how how did that pre-snap motion, you know, motion and the jet sweep motion kind of evolve with you as kind of a eureka moment in the offense? Yeah, so I know that story, but you know, from Bill Walsh, um, one of the things that you you're always trying to do is give your quarterback a tell. So you're not just going to motion to motion uh, or shift to shift or jet sweep to jet sweep uh, motion it. So um you know you're doing it for for a reason uh to try to give everybody not only your quarterback but everybody there including the offensive line an opportunity to see if uh, there's an adjustment that takes place with it from from the defense so uh and and you know you you watch us i mean we we motion almost every every play it's uh, we've got something going on there um, whether it's just a short little short motion or we're flinching a motion, uh, you see Trav do that where it looks like he's going to go on one side, comes back just off of one step. So, um, you know, it, gives, it just gives you an idea of what the defense is really going to show you. Defense is disguised very well, Matt. And, uh, and so any pre-snap read that you can get, um, you know, should be able to help you. Go next to Mackenzie Nelson. Go ahead, Mackenzie. Hey, Coach, as you guys look to put this game behind you, could you talk a little bit about the excitement uh, for Germany, but also the challenges that you guys are faced with this week as you prepare for that game? Yeah, Mackenzie, it's a, it's a longer plane ride. Uh, so you've got to make sure that you handle that part right. Um, it's a different time zone by quite a few hours. And so you've got to make sure that you handle that part um, and get some rest on the plane. Um, so, uh, you know, we take everything into consideration from hydration on. So, and, and, um, and then how we practice once we get there. And, uh, and, and so we, we leave on Thursday, we try to get our work done here and then get over there and still give ourselves time to kind of get in line. The game, I think is an 8.30 AM game here um so or somewhere in that area um so it's um you know it's a bit different that way but there is an excitement to it too i mean of, of going over there playing and then you get to play a good football team which which we you know we enjoy doing that got two more uh we'll go Sarin, and we'll go matt go Sarin. uh coach uh, on the germany front uh, i think i Saw that the Dolphins are going over today. You're not going over till Thursday. I'm just curious what, uh, you know, what you you know experiences, different things. What what brought you to the decision to go when you you are going over? Yeah, yeah. Everybody kind of does it a little different. Um, we, we did this a couple of years ago when we went to London. Um, I've done it before with other teams, and so I I just uh, I you know it, it worked. So I've kind of stuck stuck by it. Um, and, you know, we'll see how it goes. I, you know, there's a, um, anyways, that, that's, that's, I'm not sure there's any right or wrong way. I mean, teams have done it all different ways, but I've had success doing it this way. We'll go last to Matt McMullen. Go ahead, Matt. Hey coach, uh, historically speaking, your teams have tended to bounce back pretty quickly after tough losses. I'm just curious what goes into that process of learning from the previous game, but also flushing it and moving on. Yeah, Matt. Well, I'm, you know, it's, uh, you, you said it, I mean, you've got to learn from it and, 
there's a couple of ways you can go about it. You can hang hang your head, or you, or you can face the facts and try to get better. And so we've tried to go about it that way, make ourselves a better team. Um, I don't know if that ties into the wins or losses after after a bad game, but I I, I mean that's the way we approach it. And um, you, you know we've got good players here and good coaches and. Uh, there's a small margin between winning and losing in this league. And so you got to stay on top of your game all the time, every minute of it. So you, you start with that and then you go to the rest of it and things that we can learn from.